the Nintendo 3DS is a really fascinating piece of hardware. How do they fit all of that into this? Well, someone out there wanted to test the boundaries of the 3DS, because here we have the 208 in one Nintendo 3DS cartridge. So, where does this thing come from? Russia, China, uh, wait, California? Like, America? Oh no, we're to blame for this thing. No longer can I put the blame on China or Kazakhstan. Well, hey, maybe it's good. I can be optimistic. What do we got on this thing? Oh, we're screwed. So, what abomination have we put into the world this time? Haven't we done enough as a nation? I mean, come on, we created the oversized burger. What more could we do? The Nintendo DS. 3DS, Super Combo, Pokemon, Mario. That's what we could do. Right off the bat, it's nice to see that the American education system is paying off, because SOMEONE learned word art! Graphics design is my passion. The game's box art is just a bunch of other Nintendo DS titles and their box art. Yeah, remember how dumb that Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow cover was? Well, the Nintendo DS Super Combo is here to raise that bar! We got your classics like Pokemon, Final Fantasy, Mario, Castlevania, and Zelda, just to name a few. Flipping the box over, we'll see the first 80 games on this thing. Now, potential eye strain and lack of passionate graphics design aside, this is looking to be awesome! A ton of Pokemon games, a ton of Mario games, a ton of Dragon Quest games? Now that's all fine and dandy, but what's really got me excited is the fact that they got Ice Age 4 on this thing! What are we doing? Let's get started! So, yeah. 208 Nintendo DS games. Now I'm not going to take a look at all 208 games here, considering a good amount of them are well-known titles. All the Pokemon and Mario games that were advertised, like Pokemon Black and White, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, as well as New Super Mario Bros and Mario and Luigi's Bowser Inside Story, they're all actually here, and surprisingly work. Like, really well. I'm impressed. But I'm not advocating it, because, you know, that'd be illegal. However, all 208 games aren't of this quality, and there are some odd choices of games to make an appearance, such as the game I showed a small snippet of at the beginning of the video called... The Morning Adventure! Buenos dias! Hora de levantarse y a buscar a tus hermanos! Okay, as a non-Spanish speaker, first off, I'm sorry. And second, I can only assume that this wall of text has something to do with this child who murdered this other child and plated him in gold. I love gold! So the game has us walking around a house. That's it, there's nothing else. We walk around collecting Twinkies and destroying our toys. Meanwhile, the love child of Mario and Terry from King of Fighters is speaking Spanish to me and I don't know what to feel! This house is definitely a hazard. Maybe it's time to move. Here's Dead and Furious, a first-person zombie shooter trying to break into that ever-so-popular, mature Nintendo DS audience. No! No! Ah! I don't wanna die! So we take control of Human and wake up in this hospital. Why? I don't know, the story is in Spanish again, so I'm at a loss. We find a gun, as one does in a local medical facility, and need to escape while shooting zombies. Got him. The game may look and feel really simple, accompanied with that 2007 Nintendo DS shovelware aesthetic, but I personally really like it. Shooters are best when you can just be trigger happy and shoot everything in your way, like Doom, Duke Nukem, Goldeneye. Sometimes all you need is a shooter that you can just turn your brain off to. Or shoot a brain out of someone. You, you get the joke, zombies. I've covered wars, you know. Speaking of which, the zombies are genuinely terrifying, and their low frame rate movements just add to the unsettling feeling. Oh yeah, this game also goes by another name in North America called Touch the Dead. Yeah, I'll pass on doing that, thank you very much. This is a family show for crying out loud! Welcome back to Did You Know Gaming, gaming fact number one. There's like 30 Dragon Ball games on this thing. Why? Why so many? Well, I've never really played a Dragon Ball game, so let's quickly see what these things have to offer. Dragon Ball Origins. You take control of little Goku and need to walk around the forest adventuring. It's like Zelda, 
but with Dragon Ball. Not, not a lot to do though. Lots of walking around. It's fine, I guess, for an action-adventure game on the go. Could do with some more Kamehamehas though. Dragon Ball Z Harukanaru Densetsu. Here we have a strategy card game thing. Move your character strategically on this map, and when it's time to battle, get ready for some epic card placement. I mean, no, this is dumb. I don't know who watches a Shonen Jump fighting anime with spiky haired martial artists who shoot lasers out of their hands and think, mm, yeah, no, a tactical role playing game, that'd be perfect. Okay, here's another one with a really Japanese name. Whoa! This one's got music and animation and voice acting? I'm in! Okay, so this is a step in the right direction. It's a fighting game, but a needlessly complicated one. You gotta time your button presses with these meters down here. I don't really know exactly, considering I don't speak the language. But hey, at least this up here looks good! Dragon Ball Kai Ultimate Budokan. And finally, we have a simple fighting game! Mash buttons, and listen to rockin' music, and beat the crap out of your opponent. It's so simple, this is all I wanted from the beginning! Hey! Shut the f up! Okay, let's take a break from all this dumb anime and check out an actually good anime! Garfield's Nightmare. I'm not too sure if I like this yet. I might! I might like it. So the very deep and stimulating plot of this game is that Garfield is a fat piece of shit. He eats this giant burger and immediately falls asleep. That's where you went wrong. Because now he's having burger-fueled fever dreams about him walking around a castle and collecting blue coins. It's not really a nightmare, I'd say. The aim of the game is to collect as much food as possible. The game itself is a really basic platformer. It feels like something you'd play for five minutes on your phone before uninstalling it. Garfield moves so slow, it's all that lasagna! He can't run, meaning you're stuck at this brisk walk pace for the entire game. Also, you occasionally jump on a platform. Do this for three hours and congrats, you have Garfield's Nightmare. More like my f***ing nightmare. Okay, this game's called Emma in the Mountains, and when I first heard that title, I assumed it would be a game about a little girl trying to survive in the snowy Colorado mountains without dying. I don't know why I thought that. What we actually have here is a point and click adventure game starring Emma and her creepy talking dog. You just walk around the ski resort and play some snow mini games and, and talk to people. It's not exactly what I'd call fun. Why is this here? Throw snowballs and don't hit Grandpa Ted? I'll hit the old man if I want! This is my game! <gasps> and with that old man abuse, I feel like that's where I have to call it quits for today. Now, despite there being obviously a few stinky games, again, there's a ton of classics on this thing. I'm really surprised this little cartridge can hold this many games. You can play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon for a bit, then back out and play Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, and finish it all off with some Nintendogs. Also, hold up, this thing's got Children of Mana and Hero of Mana? Now, for all three of you JRPG fans out there, this game is awesome! They're JRPGs, but play like The Legend of Zelda. They're always loads of fun, and I personally find them way more fun than most top-down Zelda games. This is a really underrated series in my opinion. Oh my gosh, this thing's even got LEGO Star Wars 2! The LEGO Star Wars series was the first in the taking a popular movie franchise and turning it into LEGOs. And boy howdy did it pay off. LEGO Star Wars is an incredibly fun and humorous retelling of the movies. I actually played LEGO Star Wars before I even saw the film and became a fan that way. That's how enjoyable these games are. Oh man, and another underrated gem! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3! This early to mid-2000s era Ninja Turtles was really fun. It had the song, and the game is a really enjoyable and underrated side-scrolling beat-em-up. I like it. So, hey, despite us looking at a ton of garbage, at least we were able to end on a pretty positive note. Now, would I go out of my way and recommend this cartridge to you? 
Well, no, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. This is a bootleg with 208 officially licensed Nintendo games. That's a big lawsuit to catch. You and I don't want any piece of that. So let's just pretend we never talked about this bootleg. What video? I don't know what you're talking about. See you next week. <laughs>